Oh my god, guys, look at this. How can it know that in coffee, tea and car, car is the one which doesn't belong there? This knowledge was extracted automatically from a large text document and can be used with couple lines of code. Since word to vec algorithm was published in 2013, word embeddings are on everyone's lips. In this video, I'm going to explain what it is and how it can be used with concrete code examples. With this fast and handy technology, one can solve many NLP problems easily. Its comprehension helps in the understanding of other deep learning technologies. The newest technologies like BERT, for example, use internally also embeddings, although its structure is different. Hi, my name is Josh Konsiratzade and I am a postdoc researcher at the University of Luxembourg. One of the most foundational questions of NLP is how to create numbers out of the words. This is also true for text mining, machine learning and any other field dealing with text computationally. The phenomenon is also called creating a numerical representation for words or for text. One of the ways of doing it would be counting the occurrences of words in a document. The most important question here, however, is how to create a number which represents a particular word best in one or the other way. The goal is not only to be able to make sense of words, but also to be able to compare them to each other. This can be done on a word level or on a sentence, even on a document level. In fact, the whole field of NLP is about processing text or speech data. If you are interested in getting an idea about all application fields of NLP, please watch my video about it. So, let me first show you what word to vec can do in a code example and then we can discuss how the algorithm works. word to vec has many implementations. In this video, we are going to use the implementation from Jensen library. In the first line, we import the Jensen library and word to vec algorithm from it. In Jensen library, you can download pre-trained models or some text examples to train your own models. This is what we do in line 4 to 7. First, we download an example text. Then we train a model. What a model is, I will explain later in this video. In order to save time computationally and not to train your model again and again, you can save it locally and load it when you need it. One powerful and very useful functionality here is the ability to give in word and get the most similar words to it. In Jensen word to vec this is done with the function most similar. In our example, if we look at the word president, we get similar words to it like governor, chairman, senator and even chancellor. For the word city, we get town, suburbs, downtown, village and many others. For coffee, we get words like sugar, cocoa and many other food and drink related words. This ability of word to vec clarifies best what it does. Please keep in mind that these words are not synonyms nor antonyms because many people mistaken them for those. In the case of word to vec we speak about the words being semantically similar or related to each other without defining it further in detail. Technically, similar here means that vectors of these words occur or appear close to each other in the vector space. Because, as the name suggests, word to vec yields vectors from words, aka numerical representation for words. A vector is a mathematical object, but you can imagine it as a number representing a word. However, because words have semantically complex relationships, usually one number per word is not enough to represent it. That's why we use many numbers per word, which is mathematically called a vector. I made a separate video for vector space model and document term matrix. Please watch it in order to get a better intuition how vectors from text are created. In that video, I mentioned that the vector of a word represents the documents it occurred in. 
This is very easy to see, especially in one-hot vectors. In this way, one can compare words to each other. Words which occur in the same document will have similar vectors. Word to vec leverages the same idea. However, instead of using documents, it uses a so-called window, which would be smaller than documents and sentences. Usually the window is taken out of the context of the words, forming it from five words before the word and five after it. However, this number can be changed manually or automatically. Let's look to our next example to clarify this and to give you a better feeling without diving too much into mathematics yet. I mentioned that you can train word to vec with your own text documents. In Jensen word to vec implementation, one needs a list of sentences, which are again a list of tokenized words. With the corpus variable, I created a toy corpus and with its help, we can examine the behavior of the algorithms or the model it creates. So, our toy corpus expresses the idea that dogs or cats for some people are the best friends of humans. So in the middle row of first three lines we have the word dog and the last three lines we have the word cat. The interesting thing is here that these both words were used in the same context, namely with the word friend. The context or to be precise, the common words in it are what connects these two words. That is why, if we train the model with this text example and ask for the most similar word to dog, we will get the word cat. In order to train our model, we call the word the vec constructor, which has many parameters. You can examine those on the web page of Jensen more in detail. Here we only use the ones we need and the rest stays in Jensen's default values. As first parameter we have our corpus which is already tokenized. The second one, mean count, is tricky. It specifies the minimum number a word needs to occur in a corpus in order to be included into the model. By default in Jensen this parameter is set to 5 because it does not give enough data for a correct representation. Jensen normally is used with large text files, but in our example, words dog and cat appear only three times, that's why I set the value to 1. Vector size defines the length of a vector per word, aka the dimension of your vector. The bigger the dimension, the more information can be captured and the more accurate your model will work. However, it also depends on the size of your dataset. If it's small, go with a smaller number. If it's large, you might go up to 100 or even 200. In our example, because our dataset is so small, 3 would be absolutely sufficient. Remember, word to vec produces dense vectors. The number given in the next parameter, window, defines the words before and after the word. Because our toy example is very small, I set it to 2. The last parameter, epoch, is the number of iterations the algorithm will go through the dataset. The name of this parameter comes from deep learning, because the vectors are created with the help of a network, albeit it's a shallow one. Let's examine the output in more detail. First, we want to see our vocab and iterate through words which are sometimes also called keys in Jensen. We print those with their belonging vector. Please, don't be irritated. They don't make any sense to naked eye. They are powerful when we visualize them in a vector space or compare words with each other. As expected, the closest word to dog is cat and vice versa. If you pay a close attention, their vectors are similar or close to each other, with 0.3 and 0.2 in the first row and minus 0.2 and minus 0.1 in the last row. This is because they both share the same context. The vector of the word friend, however, looks much more far away. 
It is not surprising, because even in the real world or real text documents, our pets like dog, cat, will be probably used in a similar window of words or in a similar context. The same is also true for food. Pizza and burger, for example, have more in common because they might be our favorite food. We order and eat those in the restaurants and this would be their common words or context. President and government have basically very similar jobs. They run for the office, do politics, belong to certain parties. There are lots of words they can have in common in their context. Before we end this video, let me clarify one more important aspect. All the examples I showed before were on a word level. As I mentioned before, word to vec is a very useful tool and can be leveraged in many NLP applications, beginning from sentiment analysis or chatbots. To explain it, let us look at the following sentence. The president took the wrong decision. Here, I created a table with 10 similar words to every word in this sentence. Let's assume you are doing sentiment analysis and this sentence was labeled as negative in your training set or database. Your sentiment analysis tool can map it to negative whenever it finds this sentence in the new data. However, by creating word vectors to the words of your sentence and combining it together, you can find much more similar sentences. Because it would be probably very negative when your sentiment analysis tool finds this governor takes a false decision or this president instead of the president. From this table you can see that this sentence or let me say this idea can have many possible forms, although not every form is realistic and logical. Concatenating word vectors can be used for text classification, chatbots, automatic translation and in many other NLP tools. That's why it's called word embeddings, because we embed or use vector representations in order to train other deep learning models.